honor of Women's History Month, we've been talking with female leaders in sports, politics, business, and entertainment. And this morning, we are focusing on... Every Friday during Women's History Month... month long we've been celebrating women's history month by talking with female leaders in sports politics business and entertainment and this We are in a state of emergency. Ready? Want to song about it? Like to hear? Here it go. Free your mind. see Terry. That's Terry, Cindy, and Ron. 
I trust that feeling. Does anybody have any questions of me before I get out of here? Let's see what you guys are saying. What's up, Soul Sister Rona? Hey, Talik. I'm the brother that did my uh, Mike Jackson in Tunica, uh, Mississippi. Hey, now. Uh, hello to Terry. Respect. Bless up. Bless up. Bless up. Come to see Terry. That's Terry. Cindy. Rona. It's Terry. It's important for the black youth, especially to know that that we did have a history and that we did great things and that we had great people. And those things were not in the history books when I was in school. And um, what I'd like to be doing five years from now is attempting to rewrite the history books so that they'll know that. <laughs> Hey, my brother, you know I had to call you and thank you personally again. Cannot just go to you how happy I was to meet you in person, finally. That was just like amazing. Thank you for donating to uh, my uncle Tali. Uh, I appreciate it, and I know that my family appreciate it because he's been on our lives for years now. So yeah, and I just want to say thank you because yeah, I'm happy. Yeah, we love you guys. Bye. Bye. He's never in our life. He's forever in our life. He's forever in our life. who is black and interested in black people, let us sit down and find out how we can get together in one direction against one enemy and accomplish this job overnight. When soul singer and black activist Sam wrote the lyrics to his song, A Change Is Gonna Come, it was very direct and to the point. With some changes to it, the song was still digestible. In the year 2019, Black folks continue to go through the change rather than direct the change. A community activist named Talik Ibn Rod has made an appeal similar to what Sam Cooke was asking for. A change. It said that the meek shall inherit the earth. We ask when. When will the landlords give the meek a free land? Mr. Ibn Rod is humbly asking for the state of Mississippi. President Trump has all had sit downs with the wrong representatives of the black community. How about a real discussion? True grassroots African American. 
Join and organize Operation Exodus Mississippi today or become a supporter. This is Dusty Basement Studios, and we approve of this message. Thank <laughs> you. 
in the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition, spontaneous edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media. Wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 uh, angel snub number seven. I am your soul brother, number one. It is always an honor and it is a privilege, not a right. It is a privilege and an honor that you would allow me to take a few moments of your time, either here live or later on this month. <laughs> Whenever you decide to give us a few moments of your time. It is an honor and a privilege. I would like to just spend a few minutes to talk to those who are my viewers, those who support this platform, those who listen, to the words that come from this uh, media here provided by YouTube. I thank YouTube for giving us the privilege of being here. I am so shocked that for now at least three years, YouTube really has not bothered us. But at the same time, I don't spend a lot of time talking about the white man this and a lot of the subject matters that's so sensitive to so many. <clears throat> so it should not really be expected since I am not getting white people, Caucasian people upset and some others that Google would not uh, decide that it's necessary to uh, terminate our channel. It is their platform. And when you do, we just do what we have done within the last 10 years. They terminate your channel and you put it right back up, you know, this, this silly cat and mouse game. Because it is free and there's really nothing that they can do to stop people from using uh, this media unless, of course, they begin to charge, pay money. But if you pay money, that makes YouTube a whole different ball game because the games that Google play with people, you will no longer be able to play. And you can be sued for your services, just like uh, the auto mechanic, just like the hospital, uh, just like the Chinese joint. You are open to being sued for whatever complaint a, uh, a, a, a customer would have. Also, we can make complaint to the Better Business Bureau. I don't think that would be too good. Google would be flooded with complaints because they're not fair. What is your definition of hate speech? What is that? What is hate speech? Hate speech is just don't talk about nobody. Don't say anything. That's 
the way that you avoid hate speech. So you can make video game channels and chances are they never get terminated. You can talk about almost anything in the world, but not certain people because they'll get upset. That's pathetic. Because in the real world, you can't stop nobody from talking about you. In the real world. But I guess as long as you go on YouTube and you can look like an angel or whatever, I guess that's sufficient. And that feeds your ego. That feeds your arrogance. In the real world, it does not hold true. It does not hold true that anybody is perfect or goody two shoes or righteous it does not exist. Do you have the potential? Possible. I want to talk to my audience just for a few minutes because there's a problem and there's no specific person. There's no specific individual. So if you're listening to this broadcast, don't think I'm talking about you. This is a problem of the platform. And this is a problem not only for myself, but perhaps every YouTuber on this platform, not just me. But I say we are better than them. I say that we are more advanced than them. And we can solve our problem. They are beyond solving their problem because that's how they lived. They live based upon negative energy. That's how they live on jealousy and envy and beefing and problems and complaining. They're not seeking to solve the problem. All they want to do is complain. All they want to do is point fingers. You didn't do this and you didn't do that. Beef and argue and fight. That is not the purpose here. I'm not about beefing and complaining and fighting. If that's the case, then I might as well terminate this channel myself and save Google the headache. All of you regulars who come to listen under the sound of this voice, you are special. You are special and you can be comedic and you can be a Pat African and you can be a Hebrew Israelite. You can be who you feel you need to be. I've never told nobody you shouldn't. But the difference between you and the ordinary commission or the ordinary Pat African or the ordinary Christian or the ordinary Muslim or the ordinary Muslim follower of Elijah Muhammad and etc. 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 The difference between us and them is that they talk about this matrix. And we who come here have broken out the matrix. While they talk, we have actually done. So that is why we are demonized. This is why there's so much anger and hatred and envy and jealousy because they want to be what we have become able to break the bonds of slavery physically and mentally.
or some of you may even say spiritually. We don't need a holy book. They do. We don't need a divine hero and messiah and prophet. They do. They need some kind of crutch to walk. We don't. They need some kind of crutch because they're handicapped. They need medicine because they're sick. We don't need medicine. We don't need crutches because we're not sick and we're not handicapped. You and I, we have gone outside the matrix. We don't need a divine savior. We don't need God. We have learned how to use our brain. We have learned how to use the tools that nature, this reality that have given us to our advantage. And we depend on ourselves. We are not dependent. We are independent. This is the real church of the living God because God is us. We're God. And if we can't get it done, it won't get done. We understand. We understand that nobody from the grave can help us. We love Brother Malcolm X and we love Dr. King and we love Harriet Tubman and Fannie Lou Hamer and uh, Sojourner Truth and the list goes on and on. But we know that they cannot help us. But we learn from that history. We learn from the, the, their accomplishments, we learn from their mistakes so that we may move forward. We learn from our ancestors as a whole period so that we may move forward. Whether or not the masses want to do that, that's their business. We know what we need to do. We understand what needs to be done. We don't have a lecture series called the time and what must be done. We understood, we understand the time and what we are doing and what we have already done. What's the sense of knowing the time and what must be done, but you are doing nothing in the time to change your condition. So we have heard this speech For how long? Almost a hundred years. The time and what must be done. And nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I myself, out of this almost 100 years, I myself have lived at least 50 of it. And nothing has changed since I was a little boy. Least to say, you. So those of us who come here and we now have learned to ex accept our reality for what it is. There's an old saying, it is what it is. That's what we have accepted. It is what it is, is reality. We must breathe oxygen to live. It is what it is. There's, we have no other choice. We must consume some kind of food in order to live and we must defecate. It is what it is. We have we no choice. But in a fictional world, you have choices. I don't have to die in my fictional world. I have embraced the universe and the flesh dies but my spirit my conscious energy will flow into the fifth dimension the seventh dimension whatever I want to say such a thing could be true but there's no evidence to show us that it's possible. You ever heard the old saying, does a tree make a sound 
in the forest. How does that go? A tree makes a sound in the forest and you're not around some to that effect. Does it still make a sound? Yes, it does. So it would be logical if you were there, chances are you would hear that tree crash. If your ears are working properly, yes. Now, if you're not around and the tree did not crash, but it floated up and did a flip and spit, oh, that's not even logical. But there are those who will believe how you know the, the tree didn't fall and do a flip and, you know, nonsense. But that is the world they live in. In the world of fantasy and fiction, those things can happen. But in reality, for thousands and millions of years, we know that trees fall. They do not flip and spin around and do all this other nonsense. We know this. So even if we are there or we're not there, we don't have to see an ant. I know right now there are ants outside running around, going back and forth, blah, blah, blah. Do I see them? No. But chances are, there go the ants. It's logical. And if I go out there, chances are I will even find the ant. Are the ants riding a skateboard? Hell no. There's no ants outside outside riding a skateboard but you have some silly people those who are lost in in the matrix fantasy and fiction how, how you know maybe they maybe the ant you know just talk silly stuff but among us and there are those who whose minds are filled with fantasy and fiction and fairy tale they come here i try to be nice to them and whatever i understand that they are truly lost in the matrix. But when we are among ourselves, and that's who I want to talk to right now, I want to talk to us among ourselves. You who have broken out the matrix because you got to be special. There's got to be something special about you that make you different that you would dare come here and listen to what I have to say. Because those who are trapped in fantasy and fiction, they can't tolerate it. They can't handle it. Because their, their reality is fantasy and fiction and the imagination. <clears throat> Unrealistic. So I must give you your props. and give you your credit. There's a reason why you're here because you're fed up with what's out there. It doesn't make any sense to you. You see that what's out there is going nowhere. There's a reason why you are here. And whether I'm living or dead, as humanity goes on, if it's going to survive, it's going to have to come where we are at. All that stuff that they hold on to, all, the, all that fantasy and pseudoscience and history, all that's, all that's going to go away. If the human being is to progress. Because living in these fantasy worlds is causing the human being great detriment for thousands of years. We must now hold all of it accountable. And it must accept its responsibility. You have a conflict right now in Israel, Palestine. All of it is based upon this piece of land that's supposed to be holy. I don't never see the crops. Every time I see Israel and Palestine, it's a bunch of deserts, a bunch of rocks. What do they produce? What they fighting over? Because it says in the Bible. And so these group of people 
don't mind killing and murdering another people because I need this land because I need to prove I'm the chosen people of God and God gave this land to me. When the United States and Britain and perhaps some other nations, they were the ones that put your happy ass over there. There was, God didn't have nothing to do with it. But this is the story that we want to paint and it sounds good, and other people who believe in fiction, they embrace this. I don't know why the Palestinians willing to die over this piece of dirt. Get you some dirt that can grow you some corn. Get you some dirt that you your cows and your chickens can, can graze or, or whatever. See, but when you sick in the mind, you don't mind fighting over worthless dirt. But what gives it value is because of some magical book that we've been taught and this magical beings that this is important. Why would, which raises the question, why would some God, why would some parent, why would some father sit around here and watch this and don't do nothing about it. Y'all stop that. But I don't know some of you, you treat children like that. You let children fight over toys or, or whatever, and you don't do nothing. You watch the matter of fact, you want to put bets on, on which child can beat up the other child. Some of y'all are raggedy ass parents like that. That, that makes me question the supreme being even more that they would that this being would allow this type of behavior what's going on here so you got to be special in order to even come here to be under the sound of my voice when i do the best that i can to bring us reality in the best manner that I can. There's no fiction, there's no fantasy, there's no pseudo nothing. Because we have truly broken out of what they call the matrix. Reality or nothing at all. Now, Contrary to popular belief, I am not a teacher. You never hear me tell you or anybody, I'm some type of teacher. I can be considered that and I'm flattered, but I'm not a teacher. A lot of the things that I say, you already know. The only difference might be is that our head was caught up in fantasy and fiction and mythology. You already know. But when you heard verification, when you question these lies and this mythology and this fiction and fairy tales that we was taught, the reason why you was attracted to my voice is because it verified what you was thinking all the time. And you know you live in a world where people look at you funny when you tell them you don't believe in this stuff. What? You, you don't believe in the blackity black? You don't believe in pro-blackness? You don't believe in African supremacy you don't believe you don't believe in jesus you don't believe in yashara and you you what's what's what wrong with you they don't care what god or any of this stuff that they believe in as long as you believe in something don't be the way that you are what is that that is outside of the matrix. That's why they don't understand. 
and I don't get angry at them or frustrated with them because they just don't know. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They just don't know. They're ignorant and they cannot comprehend because they're used to fantasy land. Make believe. I'm an African. Make believe. The facts do not show that you some African. Make believe. I'm a native aboriginal that make believe. The facts that they present don't show that. The history that they produce don't show that. So their conclusions that they come up with is based upon lies and their imagination. I'm like Tupac. I'm not mad at you. You can be whatever you want to be. I'm not a teacher. What I do say here, we offer advice and we offer suggestion. So I don't know why all these suckers keep coming to me and act like they are angry and upset when I talk about the Mississippi campaign or whatever. What you getting upset about? I'm not asking you to convert to nothing. That's your business. I'm like Elijah Muhammad used to say, take it or let it alone. I'm not angry at you. I am not angry at you at all. You don't want to answer no question. You scared of question. I don't give a damn about you and your questions. I'll offer you something. Either you want it or you don't. And then there are those who hide behind inquiry. They don't want to know. They don't want to comprehend. Because it's really simple. They don't want, they want, they are fault finders because what they believe in and what they do is verified failure. We've tried it, it don't work. And before we can even start work, they want us to fail. And that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. They want us to be a loser and a slave like them. Nobody's scared of your questions and your inquiry or nothing like that. That's not your intent. Your intent is not to know. Your intent is to be a fault finder because misery loves company. Anybody knows the difference between valid questions and harassment, envy and jealousy. But again, we offer a solution that you don't have. Well, what, what should we do? And then when somebody tell you what you can do. You got all these questions. Now you don't have a damn thing. And what you've done. Fail. And continue to fail. Why don't you ask yourself. The same questions you want to ask me. Ask yourself. Because. Your crap has been proven. Been tried. And proven. It might have had some success. It might have won some battles. But when it's all said and done, it lost the, continues to lose the war. That's not my fault. Because you trapped in the matrix. 
We are here to offer suggestion and advice. And if you don't want it or you can't comprehend that advice, that's your problem. I'm not here to sell you nothing. I'm not a salesman. I'm not here to convert you to nothing. This is what you can do. If you don't want to do it, fine. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. I'm not trying to be your damn leader. I don't want your damn money. Because if I wanted your money, then I'll try to sell you. I try to convert you. I don't waste my time. I offer, we offer suggestion and advice. You take it or you don't. Nobody's gonna argue with you. You claim you hungry. You claim you hungry. And so we put broccoli and carrots on your plate. You don't want it. That's your problem. You said that you hungry. Somebody that's hungry, somebody that's starving will be happy to get that broccoli and those carrots. Apparently you must not be hungry. Apparently you don't want liberation. Apparently you don't want to answer to your situation. And that's, that's the reality. You really don't. You're not as hungry. Because you have a childlike mentality. You hear children all the time tell their mom and father, uh, uh, I'm hungry. Then the mother gives them carrots and broccoli and they look, I, I, I don't want that. Well, I thought you was hungry. Yeah, but I don't want, well, you're not hungry. That's child games people play. And believe me, when you get hungry for real, you'll tear that broccoli and them carries up and want some more. Those people around the earth who are not spoiled like your happy ass is, I guarantee you they'll tear that broccoli and them carries up and won't even be thinking about it. But when you spoil, and see, that's what your problem is. You're spoiled and you're actually comfortable in this mess. And so you think that you should have a choice because you're not hungry. And I, I wait till I, I can wait. Yeah, because you're not hungry. You're not. If you really want to change this situation and you see that these other methods and the strategy is not working, you will be happy to get on board the soul train. Yeah, let's try it. We don't have nothing to lose. Donald Trump even said to brothers and sisters in the black community, I know how you feel, what you got to lose. And actually, and the reality is, out of all the presidents this nation has ever had, if you really was gonna get something out of these Pecklewoods, Donald Trump probably was the man because Donald Trump was not the, a regular politician. So you decided to jump on board, get back on board the Democratic chain, train, and they don't give your happy ass nothing. Enjoy your pandemic uh, uh, welfare while it lasts. You're going to be crying later. Because that's just how <laughs> somebody made a good video about Democrats. Because that's just how the Democratic Party roll. That's just how they roll. Enjoy your pandemic welfare while you can. And the thing about us here, since I'm not trying to convert you to nothing, I like you just for who you are. I'm not asking you to stop being a Christian. I'm not asking you to stop being nation of Islam. I'm not asking you to stop being a Hebrew Israelite or a five percenter or a Democrat or Republican. I tell you what I think about those things, but I'm not telling you I've I've not I've not one video that show 
that I'm hating on anybody. Telling people, don't go join Farrakhan. Don't join the Pan-Africans. Don't join. Don't donate to them. You never heard me say, don't donate to Tariq Nasheed. Don't donate to Sonetta TV. You never hear me say those things. Never. Because I'm not a hater. But they'll turn around and people will turn around and do that to us. They crazy. They don't know what they don't. I wouldn't. Don't do. Don't. Uh. -uh don't do that. Haters, jealous and envious, cause you're a bunch of losers, and you want us to be a loser like you, a comfortable feral slave, stuck in the matrix with your fake ass god and your dimensions and galaxies and all this other riff raff nonsense. Trying to get the hell out of jail. I wish I could go to uh, the seventh dimension or third galaxy, whatever the hell. I wish I could. I'll go and I won't be coming back to be around y'all crazy ass. I want to talk to my soul family. So, brothers and sisters, those who come to listen under the sound of my voice, I want to talk to us because we are better than them. Yeah, we are. We're smarter than them. So I expect us to be better and smarter and greater than them. So I take the advice of Barney Fife from the Andy Griffith Show. And Barney always used to say, you got to nip it in the bud. So we have a problem here. And again, no, it's no individual. So don't please, please don't tell me you was talking about me. I'm not talking about your dumb ass. I'm going to say it like that because I'm telling you. Stop telling me I am talking about you when I'm telling you this is, about, this is not about an individual. This is about a general problem. And I'm not scared of you. If I was talking about you, I would tell you in your damn face. So stop doing putting words in my mouth. Like that troll. That troll's supposed to be here with his fake nice crap and put words in my mouth. I did not say that. Ain't gonna do it right in my face. Get your troll ass off my sight. I did not say that. This is an individual. This is not an individual problem. This is a general problem that can be found not only here but on other platforms. I want to talk about it so that we can nip it in the bud because we are family, because we are advanced, because we are the real. Did I offend anybody? Because <laughs> I know our, our emotions are, are, we really very sensitive. And that's what I want to talk about too. You know, we, I've never been around people that's so emotional. Don't go to jail. Don't, don't go to prison. Because you're going to be emotional a whole lot. Nobody don't give a damn because you're emotional. You better hope somebody don't uh, file down a, 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 a plastic fork or a knife and stab you in your gut, give you a reason to cry. You hurt my feelings. I talk about these other suckers out here. That's the reason why they don't want to come here, because I, I hurt their feelings. If your feelings is hurt like that, you need to roll out. Go back to fantasy and fiction. Go back to the Matrix where somebody can cuddle you. Give you some Similac milk or something. 
kiss your little knee because you fell over. Grown ass people, 20, 30, 40, 50 some years old or whatever, and you, you're feeling you're, you're like little children. I know in martial arts, and I believe my deacons, <clears throat> I believe my deacons, I think they are, I think they go to the gym, they are into fitness, and maybe I think uh, one of the deacons or both of those deacons, they are into martial arts. When I was taking martial arts classes, You go through these routines and I was with a group of guys. They were scared to get hurt. And my instructors told us and he looked at us so pathetic. Well, he didn't look at me because I don't, I don't play that. And he's like, why are y'all crying and why are you acting that way? Because in a real fight, nobody don't give, nobody don't care about your, your whimpering. Nobody care about you. In a real fight, people trying to kill you, hurt you. And here you are in martial arts class. And you whimpering and you scared to get hurt. So what if you get hurt? You, that's how you got to learn. You gotta take the pain. And these guys are whimpering. My instructor liked me because whatever he wanted to do, I done. If I get hurt, so what? I go get some Bengay or whatever it is and, 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 and whatever, some alcohol, and I heal up for class the next time. These men, are, are, are they flinching, they scared to get hit or whatever. In a real skirmish, these people are trying to kill you. If somebody pull a knife on you, they don't, they don't give a damn about your feelings. Or they pull a gun on you. They're not, they don't care about your feelings. Matter of fact, they hope that you are scared. Because if you stay, if you're not emotional, there's a good opportunity you could take that gun or the knife Use their own knife and their gun on them. If you stay cool, calm, and collect, and if they offer the opportunity, you can take the crap from them. But when you're scared, it's not going to happen. Feelings getting hurt. You talk about Mr. Firecar crying at. You talk about Tariq Nishi. You talk about, you talk about, you talk about. <laughs> Excuse me, I got, just, just the thought of it, I got to. <laughs> <laughs> you talk about Angel Stuff Up 7. <laughs> I hope y'all not doing that with me. <laughs> you don't have to cry for me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> you talk about uh, white Jesus. You talk about black Jesus. <laughs> you you talk about the, the seventh dimension. You talk about astral projection. <laughs> Woo! This is not the place for you to be. I would rather have 10 strong people than a thousand cry ass babies because you're, 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 you're useless. You're useless. Weak, pathetic losers. <clears throat> so look, I know that many of you don't want to hear me talk about 
the Mississippi campaign. <clears throat> I know you don't. You you can you can handle it to a certain point, but you really you really you're really not interested. You want to hear about something like the rest of the people in the matrix. You want to hear, you want to focus on lottie die fairy tale, something that you can be, something that you can complain about, that type of thing. I know this because your actions speak louder than words. I don't say nothing about it because I know who I'm dealing with. I know who I'm dealing with. I don't care how you talk, I don't care what you say, because I'm not basing my judgment on you on what you say. I'm basing my judgment on you by your actions. Actions speak louder than words. I don't say nothing because I'm not trying to convert you to nothing. I'm not trying to sell you nothing. Either you do or you don't. And that's fine with that's fine with me. I, like I told you, I don't care. I really don't care. When I was locked up, that's all I talked about. People didn't like me because I want to get out. What was the solution to my problem? Where's the brother? He put talk soul to me. Where's that at? Didn't you write that brother somewhere? Talk soul. Yeah, there you go. When I was locked up, what was the solution to my problem? What was my problem? My problem was I was locked up. I got to get out. So I finally found a way to get the job done. And I solved my problem. What was my problem? My problem was incarceration. What solved my problem? To get out of incarceration. What is your problem? Our problem is living with racists. Living, being dominated by people who don't give a damn about us. Our problem is incarceration. What is your solution? Liberation. So I don't give a damn about all these other different things y'all want to talk about. The solution is your liberation. Your solution is your separation or even segregation. That's the solution. So talking about all this other stuff is not, nothing about complaining and whimpering over something. But it, it comes to an end. All that comes to an end when you gain the solution. When you accomplish the solution. So how are you going to get angry at me? Because I want to bring a solution. I know that the solution to all these different things is this plan that we have. It will bring a, a, a solution to all of it. I don't have to come on here and talk about what well, a black man and a black woman and the children and all these other different stuff and the black and all these different subjects. I'm not going to say what y'all talk about. You know what you talk about. I'm not going to say what these different subjects is. It's because I know I will hurt your feelings and you get emotional. But you're not doing nothing to bring a solution. So we hear all these different things. What's the solution to the problem? You don't talk about that because you don't have nothing. So you just sit around and you want to spend 30 minutes and 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour, two, five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 hours talking about 
something that you don't have a solution for. And ain't trying to get a damn solution. You just want somebody to feel sorry for your happy ass. Oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is me. Just like them pieces of trash Negroes I was locked up with. Run around talking about they want to get out the crazy house. Oh, woe is me. Ain't doing a damn thing to get out. Just complain every day. And then when somebody bring them a solution, they don't want to hear it. But I thought that's what you want. I thought you said you was hungry. Well, here's some broccoli and carrots. Because they don't want that. They won't. They find joy in their suffering. Oh, woe is me. Oh, look what happened to me. Oh, the white man. Oh, so-and-so did me wrong. They don't want to solve the problem. They don't want to solve the problem for them as an individual, nor do they want to solve the problem for others who have not even been born yet. Because if you solve the problem, it won't be around for the other ones that follow behind you because you, you solve with it. You solve your problem. I talk about the Mississippi campaign is because I understand and I know that it can bring it is the solution. And maybe you don't comprehend what it's really about. You think you do, but you don't. Because it encompasses many, many fact factions, factors here. It's more than what some people believe. It makes no sense to take control of a state and we remain in the condition that we're in. Even Elijah Muhammad was talking about when somebody asked him about black people going to Africa. You're not going to make it in no Africa in the condition that you're in. You're not. It's easy. The, the easy part actually is taking control of a state. That's the easy part. To maintain the state. To take the state from a poverty-stricken state to wealthy state, that's the problem. To take the people from to take the people from your pitiful condition that we find ourselves in. That's the problem. Because in order for us to be successful, brothers and sisters, we must become, as they say in religion, as a righteous people. And you don't have to believe in God. And you don't have to wait on no divine savior in order to be a righteous person. I know that I reject all that stuff, but I know that I'm more righteous than many of these suckers that's out here and, and praying to God and worshiping rocks, walking around rocks in, in, in the desert and going to church every Sunday. I already know I'm more righteous than many of them. I already know. I already know this. That's what we call it. In order to be successful, in order to maintain what we win, we must be different. So if we live in evil, that means we have to be good. So that means, so if we live in filth, that means we got to be clean. If this world that we live in is unrighteous, that means we have to be righteous. So for us to take control of a state and stay unrighteous, you're not going to win. You're not going to win. It's a waste of time. So we might as well. I, and, and I'm very glad that you decide to continue to do what you're doing because you're filthy and you don't have your act together. You're not righteous. So you are in the place where you belong.
And that's a good thing. That's why I'm always talking about the Mississippi campaign. Because I understand, I understand what it's 1000% what it's about and the activity that we're going to implement in order to, we got to change you. Not talk about God, but you got to become God. I understand that we are damaged goods, but our children, our babies don't have to be damaged goods. How can a child become a drug addict and they don't know nothing about drugs? How can they know, how can they become an alcoholic and they don't know nothing about drinking alcohol? This is what you're going to do by taking this geographical area. You're going to change this geographical area from unrighteousness to righteous. And even though we are damaged goods and messed up ourselves, we know what to do to maintain and protect our babies. So as they grow up, they don't know nothing about this stuff. Before you lay down in your grave, you know that the children never don't know don't know nothing about the word nigga or getting drunk or high or drive by shootings. What, what is a what's a drive by shooting? What's getting drunk? What's getting high? This you need we need a change of environment. You need to segregate. You need to separate. So your babies don't be influenced by this stuff like you are. That's why you can't get off your lazy ass. That's why you concentrate on other things. It's because you're trapped in the matrix. You're trapped in this mess. And instead of using your energy to get out the mess, you want to concentrate on how the mess is affecting you. Of course, you, you're, in the, you're in, the, in, the, in the doodle hole. You're in the septic tank. You're supposed to stink. You're supposed to have problems. Because you're in the septic tank. And then there are some of you who think that you are better than others. But you still, you're in the septic tank. You're playing in the dirt just like everybody else. If we all playing in the dirt, you might have less dirt than me. But guess what? Everybody that played in the dirt got to take a bath. Y'all still dirty. Some of y'all work in the hospitality uh, uh, genre there. And when you vacuum clean some of these rooms, the, some of the vacuum cleaners, I have a little bit of dirt. And then some of the vacuum, some of the room, I have a whole lot of dirt. It don't make any difference. All the rooms have to be vacuumed because they all dirty. They still have to be vacuumed. They all have to be made clean. I know when I go out of town and I know some of those maids and housekeepers or whatever, they probably really like my room because I try to keep my room just like I, I, I try to keep my room clean. They don't have to do a whole lot of cleaning up. But it don't make any difference. That room still has to be clean for the next person, no matter what I've done. So the housekeeper comes in, she still had to vacuum and clean the sink and all like that. I made her job much easier. It still has to be cleaned up. So we need to get off this self-righteous kick. Like this, we live in this septic tank and nothing bothers us. We, we, we're not affected. Yes, you are. Just the fact that you believe that show that you have been affected. Not me. I'm better. I got more education. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm able to know you are messed up. You might not be messed up as somebody else. Oh, you messed up. It's impossible for us to be stepping in the rain and, and you don't get wet. No, you messed up just like the rest of us. You feel better but you still messed up too. 
But that's the reason why I talk about the Mississippi campaign. Because it's a solution. Working on the solution, if you get the so you you accomplish the solution, that's the end of the problem. But as long as you don't have a solution, then the problem is gonna remain. What is the solution when you get hungry? Easy to eat. Until you eat, you still gonna have the same problem. And you can complain. Oh, my stomach hurt. I wish I had something to eat and blah, blah, blah. My stomach show rum. Until you eat something, your stomach is going to rumble. You're going to feel pain in your side, blah, blah, blah. Until you bring a solution to the problem. The problem is to eat. Once you eat, oh, wow, that was good. I like that. Now you're ready to go to sleep and take you a nap because you're nice and full. Your stomach is not grump, uh, grumbling and rambling no more. And now you found a, a solution to your problem. Complaining does not solve your problem. Complaining does not solve anybody else's problem. Solutions do. The reason why these people are after us on this platform is because we offer a solution. It sounds valid. It sounds credible. It can work. They know this. Absolutely. Because that's the solution. It even says in religious scriptures the God told Moses, You got to get away from Pharaoh. And Pharaoh went, I mean, Moses went to Pharaoh and told him, you got to let my people go. Got to get the hell out of here. Nothing is going to change for the children of Israel until they get the hell away from Pharaoh. How are you going to change your life? If, you, if you're not seeking change. It's not going to work. We talk about the different problems that we have here. That's not really my forte, but I know that we need these things. So I would bring other brothers and sisters or whatever, and they bring these issues. But don't expect me, because I want out. That's all, that's all I'm about. I want out of here. And I bring us message of self-improvement because if you don't self-improve, it don't make any sense to take control of a state if you're still a nigga. If you still my dog, you still a bitch and a hoe. We got to change. I want to say this in conclusion. You're the only family that I have. Those who come to this platform, you're my real family. We are the same. We are outside the matrix. We are all we got. My brother Deacon is in the chat room and we had a skirmish a few weeks ago or whatever. But that quickly was dealt with and the Deacon is in the chat room right now. We cannot allow See, all of us are different and we, re we, we react to different things differently. But we have to have enough compassion and love and understanding for our family here. If somebody comes on here talk about apples and you don't like apples, that don't mean you have to come on here and an apple do this and an apple do that. Why, you, why is that necessary? 
That's not necessary. And you see that you're upsetting or somebody else is, is having a problem. Your family, your soul family. You don't have to do that. We have to have respect for one another. And we have to have empathy for each other because we're different. We're all in the cesspool. And everybody, and I know that some of y'all are emotional. And when I see that, even though, you know, I, 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 your feelings is hurt easy. When I see that, I, I try to back off. When you my family, when you my soul family. Now, you some of these other suckers, I don't give a damn. But for my family, there's a reason why everybody is here. Some of you have my telephone number and we talk. Some of you don't. Some of, the, some of you I only know when I come on live stream and we talk or whatever. I'm not a, I don't never say that I'm, I'm perfect. None of us are perfect. I'll, if you knew me and if Brother Talil was here, he'll tell you because he talked to me all the time. I can get in these old grumpy moves or, or whatever. But Brother Talib is still here. Brother Talib's still here for years. But Brother Talib know how, how I am. I don't mean you no harm. I'm just a grumpy old guy. <laughs> I don't mean you no harm. I don't mean you no harm. Can I state my opinion? Do I have the right to state my opinion? Why you got to get emotional? Because I'm stating my uh, opinion. That's my opinion. Why are you crying over my opinion? I'm not trying to cause you any harm. We take things too personal. We're not going to be able to build nothing and maintain nothing when we're so emotional and take things so personal all the time. There's an old saying, you don't have to fight every battle. I had to learn that when I was locked up. That's another lesson I learned. I had to choose my battles because when I choose my battles, I'm out to win. So I'm going to give a thousand percent. I'm out to win. We must be able to treat each other with empathy and respect so that we can go on and do better things. And even though some people are emotional, sometimes it's about how we bring things to people. But a person has the right to speak how they feel. I can talk about apples. Just because you don't like apples, why I can't talk about apples? Now, if you're nice, I might listen to you so that you can explain why oranges are just as good as apples. But see, we don't do that we try to justify our own nasty behavior because ain't nothing wrong with me. I can come here and tell you there's a whole lot wrong with me. I have a problem when somebody come to me and it looked like they are aggressive or whatever because I was bullied for years and I feel as though I'm getting bullied. And you can ask Sister Noble, I don't know how many times I've been on the phone or whatever or in person with Sister Noble because this, this has happened in person, not just on the phone. I don't know how many times myself and Sister Noble, well, maybe we shouldn't be friends. I said, maybe we shouldn't be friends. Well, why don't you hang up? Why don't your happy ass hang up? I don't know how many times we've been through, <laughs> through that scenario. Go on about your business. Well, you go on about your business. 
But Sister Noble is still here. And I'm still here with Sister Noble. And it has not stopped. It does not stop. But we understand that we're family here. We're all we got. So either I give in, I'll call her, she'll give in, call me, we squash it and keep moving. We are better when we are together and strong. Don't let, everybody here is here for a reason. They're your soul family. They're your soul brother, they're your soul sister. Don't allow some type of conflict or, or a disagreement or whatever cause, cause you to drift away from your own. The people on the outside, they're, they're not your own. This is your own. When, when somebody hears talk, they understand where you're coming from. The people on the outside don't understand you. They don't understand where you want to go. They're comfortable slaves. They live in fantasy and fiction. Absolutely, absolutely. As the love grow, we laugh it off and it roll up. That's what happened between me and, and, and the deacon. You know, laugh that stuff off and keep, and keep rolling. Later on, nobody have time for that stuff. This is the place to be. The people that come here are special. When I was in the nation of Islam, the reason why people came to the nation of Islam, there was a reason why they was there. They was looking for something. So everybody coming here, they're looking for something. And if we end up, if we turn out just to be, we're just reality niggas on earth. Put that in the, in the chat room real quick, uh, Deacon. The reality's niggas on earth. If that's what we are, nobody don't need. It's a good thing that nobody come and listen to us. It's a good thing nobody want to be around us. Hell, you can get, you can find niggas anywhere. You can find trash anywhere. That's the deacon right there. He said we ate some. KFC and kept it moving. That's what we did. Kept rolling. Didn't miss a beat. You said this is your family or, or is it specific individuals you're pointing out? Somebody, somebody that you like that might kiss your ass. We don't have ass kissers here. I don't want nobody kissing my ass. I don't want nobody uh, uh, trying to get next to me and rub it dub and, and trying to stroke my ego. I don't need all that garbage. I want to get free. I want to get liberated. It's nice that you uh, respect somebody or honor them, their works or whatever. That's nice. Nobody, I am not better than nobody here. I just got a stupid ass YouTube channel. You know just as much as I do. Matter of fact, when you comment or I talk to you on the phone, you teaching me, you helping me. And I get stronger. And if you want me to represent us, I'll be happy to do that. I want to be a good representative for us. And if I cannot do that, I'll sit my happy ass down Talib, you can do it. Sister Noble, you can do it. Soul Brother 85, you can do it. Yes. Matter of fact, Sister Noble, because of her work, because of what she's been doing this year, I decided that Sister Noble would give the keynote address for our Soul Liberation Day in December. Because it's not about me. This is about us. This is about we. 
She doing the work. She's making the moves. She's not stupid. She's not an idiot. Very, very intelligent woman. And she puts herself down sometimes. She says, I'm not charismatic. and I, I, I'm not articulate as a, who gives a damn? I like you for who you are. And you spit your truth. Apparently you're doing something right. You got all these trolls and all these suckers that's after you. And you don't have to be charismatic. You don't have to be all articulate and all that kind of stuff. Because what's going, what brings you hatred is not your charisma or your articulation. It's the reality, the real truth that we bring. And this real solution that we bring, we call Operation Exodus Mississippi Campaign. So I just want us to give us something. Look, I am not the all-knowing. And what I said might go in this ear and out the other. All I'm saying is that we are family here. We all that we got. And so we should treat each other like we all that we got. And nobody here is your enemy. But we don't have to think the same way. When you hear Talib talk, he don't. We have things in common. Talib don't talk the way I do. Sister Noah don't talk the way I do. We're different. And we see things different. But for me, it's Operation Exodus Mississippi or nothing at all. That's just me. I want out now, now, I want out. I I'm the kind of guy that steady banging on the cell wall and I've done it in real life. Steady, I want out, I want out, I want out. I didn't take no break, I want out. Some of us might need a break. Woo, that's, that's enough of that. Let me, let, let me listen to some Marvin Gaye. Let, let me call my boyfriend or whatever. I don't care, I don't care about Marvin Gaye. I don't care about no... Uh, 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 girlfriends, I want out, I want out, out, that's me. And I got out. The reason why I'm talking to you, Carter, because I got out. I want out now. Like Seti used to say back in the day, I had to bang on the beast. I'm not a know-it-all. If I'm incorrect, if I'm wrong, we can have a part two and you can come here live or you can come in the chat room or whatever and you can give your version to help us to be better. Because all of us need to be, all of us here need to be connected because we are the soul family. It's not that many of us. We're surrounded by People trapped in the matrix. So who you gonna talk to? You can't talk to them. They trapped in fantasy and fiction and la la land. All you got is us. Unless you're really part of them, then you need to take your happy ass and go ahead, go where they at. So I don't mean no disrespect to nobody. And this is not about an individual. This is about something in general. Because I've noticed in the chat room sometimes people make uh, comments or whatever. And we have our little disagreements or, or, or whatever. And that's all right. But that person, especially when you know they are part of this, that person is not your enemy. They're not your enemy. They're your friend. They're part of your soul family. We cannot take control of a state and have and, and, and maintain a lot of these negative behaviors and thinkings that we have. It's not going to work. 
and then the children are watching us and they're going to copy like they do right now. They, they copy these, these behaviors. So we continue to lose. I don't want to be a loser. I'm a winner. Again, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, so, I mean, I'm here to learn too. I just know that everybody here that come here is not your enemy. Whether you agree or disagree on whatever, they're not your enemy. And you don't have to look at people like they're your enemy. We're not enemies here. This is our family, soul family. Anybody here that come support Angel Snuff number seven, that's family. And they are different. There's a reason why they're here. They know they don't belong out there. You know you don't belong out there. Those people trapped in the matrix. All their different gods and they're black and black and the melanin and they floating out their bodies and going out into space and all this stuff. No, I don't want to be around that crap. I want to come to a place where I can talk and be myself and everybody around me know exactly what's happening because they are not in the matrix either. When it's just me and the Dickens, I'll be feeling great. I'll be feeling like, woo, because the Dickens is just like me. And I can roll. I don't have to worry about somebody's feelings getting hurt. I don't have to worry about nobody being emotional. I don't have to worry about I can just be who I am. And the next step in my development is I want my people, soul brothers and sisters, I want us out of the matrix. I want us out of this mess once and for all. Liberation is number one. Liberation or nothing at all. So on that note, another 30 minute video is an hour. <laughs> It never fails. It never fails. It never fails. You know, so I appreciate everyone in this uh everybody that came to this spontaneous broadcast. I Again, I don't mean to offend nobody. I don't uh, I don't mean to disrespect nobody or anything like that. And, and I'm not talking about, and please don't say, you talk, don't, I, this is in general. It's been going on a little while. I just decided I need to address this issue, nip it in the bud so that we can grow and be better. Nobody here is, your enemy. Now, do everybody, everybody have certain problems? I told you what my problem is. I don't like feel, I don't like feel, feeling, getting bullied. And I'm a grumpy old guy. <laughs> I am. I'm a grumpy old guy. That's just me. I can't, that's just the way it is. And since I know I'm a grumpy old guy, I try to watch myself because I, I don't want to offend nobody and I want to try to be respectful. I have to control and watch myself because I know I have that problem. I know that I have to watch myself when somebody's talking to me and they don't mean me no harm, but I think I'm being bullied. I got to watch that type of, I got to watch that about me. I know this. And if you think that you living in the United States of America, this cesspool, and you've been here all your life and you don't have a problem, that's a problem in and of itself. Something wrong with all of us living in this septic tank. You might not see it, but maybe that's the reason why you're having problems with other, dealing with other folks, because maybe they see it. Because we don't always see everything. Sometimes it takes somebody else to see for us. So on that note, thank you very much. And uh, 
to the deacons, of course, those in the chat room, mad scientists, and it was some troll type person talking about their daddy got a lot of money. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that's about. Thank you, GMO, for uh, stopping by. Those who are listening and those who will be listening later on, it's always an honor and a privilege uh, that you would come and be with us. And uh, I think I'm going to have a classic marathon for, uh, for Monday. Monday is Memorial Day. I might come on live Memorial Day, but I think I will probably play a whole lot of classic videos from, from Monday, Memorial Day. I think I might do that. Uh, but anyway, thank you again. Jot down your comments. I much appreciate you. I don't mean no harm, no disrespect. I just want us to be better because this is the soul family and this is all that we got. And as Don Cornelius used to say to us as in parting, I wish us love, peace, and soul.